You are now tuned in to Millennial Hurt. You are now tuned in to Millennial Hurt Podcast. You are now tuned in to Millennial Hurt Podcast. Tuned in, tuned in to Millennial Hurt. Tuned in, tuned in to Millennial Hurt Podcast. Hi guys, it's Cheryl's with the Millennial Herb Podcast, and I'm here to bring you a special edition featuring P. Frank Williams. He is the executive producer and showrunner of the new docuseries, Hip Hop Homicides, currently streaming now on WeTV and all Black streaming platforms. How are you doing today? What's good? How are you feeling today? I'm feeling good. I'm excited to talk to you. Thank you for having me. I appreciate you. Yeah, I'm no with the millennials, you know. Millennials, shout out to the millennials and the Gen Z. I got a couple of Gen Zs. I got 17 year old and uh two twins, 17 and an eight year old. But you know, millennials, y'all, uh, y'all are a very special bunch there. We'll, we'll get into it, but you know. Definitely. And I have to start off this interview because I'm a huge hip hop head. Okay. And I know that you are a big hip hop fan and you have a lot of knowledge. So it's only right that we talk hip hop. So Oh word, I'm, okay. I want to know who is your favorite rapper of all times. How you gonna get on the, the interview and ask me that? It's the first question. That's so <laughs> like you out of control. You out of pocket. You know, you know <laughs> does the millennials know what out of pocket means? Yeah, of course. We're not Gen Z. <laughs> um, yeah, no. Um, that's a very complicated, loaded question. When you say favorite, what is favorite? Mean? Um. Okay. Let's say if you had to to pick. From I'll give you to make it easier. I'll give you an era. So let's say nineties. Um, that's a tough one. Still, uh, the nineties probably Tupac. Uh, uh, the eighties, Houdini, L O Cool J somewhere. Two thousands got to be Hove or so. Um, X, two thousand tens, Kendrick. So I mean, I guess every generation has their. Deal, but I think the the um the Michael Jordan of hip hop got to be hove. He got the most stats. He got the most influence. He got the most longevity. Uh, got the most bars. Uh, most consistency. So I think if the greatest rapper and the best rapper probably would be Jay Z, just from the stats. I know you want to get don't don't at me, but yeah, that's just my opinion. Okay. So I have to follow up by asking your favorite hip hop record label. Of all times, you got some good questions. Uh, I've never been asked these questions. Uh, favorite hip hop record label? You know, I produced a show called Inside the Label on BET, which I did. Uh, Grand Hustle, obviously, I know Bad Boy. You see, Easy E and all kind of le- records. I think I got the Wu Tang, Jeff okay. Rowe, all over here. But uh, my favorite record label of all time. It's a lot of good. It's a lot of good choices. So you gotta, you, you gotta. Know Def Jam. I mean, you probably would have to go Def Jam, Bat Boy. Uh, yeah, in terms of the the breadth of their catalog, in terms of what if you look at the whole A to Z of Def Jam, Bad Boy, I think those is two of the greatest ever. There's underground, um, you know, labels that did it, Rockefeller. You know what I mean? That was really crazy. I think Death Row has to be up there um, in terms of that. And you got to look at Luke. You got to look at uh, uh, Jay Prince, rap a lot. You know what I mean? So the, you got to put cash money with Drake, Nikki. You, you gave a, a couple great ones. I mean, I, you asked the question. You can't put one in one hat, you know, one bag. All right. So um, before we switch gears, I'm, I want to ask one more question. Who would you say is the most underrated rapper? Wow, you got really good questions. Uh, they usually ask me like short shows that I did. That's a great question. No, we're gonna get into that, but we're I just in. wanted Who's our the most I wanted... underrated rapper. Wow, well, let me actually let me flip it on you. Who do you think is the most underrated rapper? Um, I would say Nas is the most underrated rapper because Nas doesn't get his flowers at all. He's a legend, he's been putting in work since the 90s. He just dropped KD3, and I mean, for like like I said, I'm a hip hop fan. For hip hop fans, we know what Nas is lyrically. Well, I literally, literally I just posted a video of me. I just saw Nas in the club in New York City, like literally, what is today? 
Uh, this was three days ago. This was Friday, Friday night. Um, yeah. And so he had the KD3 uh, party. I saw him in there at Hit Boy and he was talking about hip hop and how he just did this album. You know, he's the busiest he's ever been and he's making the best music he's been. So I'd have to agree that he's up there underrated. Scarface. Oh, definitely. Um, Ludacris, I think, is one of the greatest people don't do. But yeah, there's a lot of great underrated rappers. Okay, so now we could switch gears into talking about hip hop homicides. <laughs> um, <laughs> I just wanted our viewers just to get to know you because your resume is incredible, and we're going to get into that. Thank you. But, well, you know, I got Bone Thugs. You can oh, say I, Records is one of the greatest labels of all time. You know what I mean? With Eric, Eric, without Eric, there's no Dre, there's no Snoop. You know, there's no game, there's no Kendrick. Just you know, if you really wanted to. To talk hip hop, like, because we could talk hip hop for hours. Right, right. I'm a huge no, it's, it's, it's saying, I, I just wanted to make sure. Now that I know that you verified, you got your blue. Yeah, what they call it a blue check. A hip hop. Oh, blue check. Yeah, you got no, blue if check I was to show you, if I was to show you like my apartment and my posters of everything, it's looking like you too with Tupac, Nas, Bone Thugs, Lauren oh, right. Hill, Fuji's, all of that. Um, right. But can you tell our listeners a brief synopsis about hip hop homicides? Yeah, Hip Hop Homicides is a uh, one-hour true crime show that's airing now on WeTV. Uh, uh, it profiles the high folk. It, it, it goes into detail about the whole high-profile murders of some of hip hop's most, you know, well-known people: XX Sensation, Pop Smoke, um, Mo Three. Um, we get into Chinks, uh, Soldier Slim, Magnolia Shorty, FPG Duck, King Von. A lot of really great episodes that talk about their lives, and it's part biography, part true crime. A part sort of like, you know, um, eulogy in some extent of what we did. So, no, it's hosted by Van Lathan, formerly from TMZ, TMZ okay. uh, executive produced by 50 Cent, Curtis, Curtis Jackson. It's 50 and uh, Mona Scott Young from Love and Hip Hop and just sprinkle. I put some sprinkle on it. That's what I, I just did at the end. So can you tell us how this project came together? Yeah, no, Hip Hop Homicides uh, was manifested by 50. 50, obviously, as you know, is a gunshot survival uh, victim. He's went through it in real life. It's not like he's talking about something he doesn't know. He was a closely connected to Pop Smoke, who he felt like was his little brother. If you look at Pop, see the way he raps, see what he do, he looks like a baby 50, right? And so he yep. was mentoring uh, Pop in real life. And unfortunately, Pop did die and was killed. And I think 50 was suspicious of that shit. I was like, what? What's going on? This is not cool. Like, you know, he, I think he took it hard. And so after that, I think he called up Mona Scott and was like, yo, let's do a show about dead rappers. And so it sort of manifested from that to me getting involved to help develop it and, you know, finish it. I just go out in the field and shoot it and make it real. OK, so Fat Joe had said once that being a rapper is the world's most dangerous jobs. And recently on Twitter, all over social media, there's a talk about giving people their flowers while they're here. You know, Nori. On Drink Champs, he's really big on doing that. He recently gave Take Off His Flowers before he passed. My question to you is, why do you think that rappers get more accolades and become more famous when they pass or they get killed? Wow, I mean, that's a, a heavy question. Um, well, you know, it's unfortunate. I think, again, I want to make sure that, you know, as a more like, you know, a young OG, uh, this is happening in Black society where Black people are dying or getting murdered has nothing to do with hip hop in the streets, your uncle, your cousin, and wherever else. So I want to make sure that it's a bigger issue than just the music, so mm -hmm. that we think about gun violence in America is at an all-time high. You see the kids in UVA got shot, young people with guns, conflict resolution skills have nothing to do with the music. But um, I think that it, it's unfortunate that we have to wait till people are dead. You know, people celebrated Tupac and Big much more, and their uh, catalogs became more valuable when they died. Mm -hmm. But I do think that we need to live as long as possible. You know, I need to be on the Kennedy Center Awards. You need to be like 85 with, you know, harassing your wife and trying to get it done and seeing your great grandkids. And I think that, you know, the life expectancy in black male period beyond rap is lower. And uh, I think we just need to like do better things in our community so that we don't get to this. You know, I just want to say it's bigger than the music. That's that's the point I'm trying to make to you guys. Um, I don't think we appreciate, you know, if you look at other music cultures, which I've had the chance to cover, rock and roll, country, whatever else, they don't have the level of violence and they celebrate their people. And in rock and roll, the, the Rolling Stones and everybody else can get love um, 
forever. They can perform. They can do whatever. Hip hop, you get 50. Like, oh, you rap, you're old. I saw the young man, um, you know, from Atlanta talking about Nas saying that he's not relevant or whatever. And I was like, yo, is, is the cement that you're walking on not relevant? Mm. Say it again. If the cement that you're walking on is not relevant, then I'm not sure how you walk to where you got to. So I just want to make sure that, you know, while we're alive, we get all the flowers we can. And that's what I did with my show, Hip Hop Homicides, to make sure we gave homage and love to these young people who died, unfortunately. And Hip Hop Homicides, it touches on gun violence within hip hop. And gun violence in general just has a huge impact on one's mental health. I want to ask you as the executive producer, what did you do for to prioritize your mental health while working on this project? You're going to get an a, a plus for your questions today. Um, oh, thank you. Ms. Shrills, uh, that's a really good question. It's so ironic that, um, uh, you know, I produce a lot of different things and been in, you know, a lot of traumatizing situations. If you look at my resume or whatever, um, one of the executives while we were producing the show, probably about three or four months in, asked out of nowhere, how are you guys doing? Mm -hmm. Because I'm in the field every day. People are downloading these pains. A lot of African-Americans don't get the therapy. These mothers, their sons, one woman, FPG Duck's mother out of Chicago, three of her kids that got murdered. And, you know, Mo Three's father saw his son getting murdered multiple times on the internet. Pop Smoke's, you know, mother, you know, had to see that. And, you know, it's just a really terrible thing. XX Sensation, there's the video of it. So I think there's a collective trauma. And I see myself as like a gatekeeper to um, bring it to you because you may not be there. So I'm able to do that. But uh, it was a very traumatic experience, by the way, and very tough. And uh, uh, I remember when um, it's Mo3. Mo3 is a Dallas rapper who got murdered on the freeway uh, a couple of years ago. The guys ran on the freeway with him with guns and murdered him. I think it was a baby mama situation. And just if you, re you know, research it, but... Uh, we interviewed all the mothers on the show, which is very tough as a man to see the girlfriends and mothers of these young men. Because you think about them, you just read about them. And you just say, oh, whatever. You don't think about that. Somebody's really daddy, son, baby, you know, husband or whatever. And so Mo Three's father, we were in the barbershop in Dallas and he started bawling crying. And we're all in the store, you know, in the um, shop. And, you know, other people were crying there, too. Myself, I was like, oh, this shit is too much. You know, because his he has to relive because the murder of his son is on the internet. So he had kept watching it, right? And so um, I think if I wasn't feeling something, then it would be a problem. So yeah, it was a very traumatic experience. Um, I just want to make sure that I, you know, I, I just took a picture. You know how you take a Polaroid yeah. and I show it to you and you make your own judgment. So that's what I, I did. But yes, um, I had to deal with my own mental health on a show about my brothers and sisters dying. I can only imagine, and um, we always advocate for self-care, so I hope that now that the show is out that you're practicing self-care for yourself. Yeah, no, and I, and I will say, you know, I know that the target of your uh, podcast and what you're doing, I have young children, I work, you know, most of the people that died on this show, the pop homicides are all millennials, by the way, um, and I think that there's an incredible amount of pressure through social media, through cloud chasing, which killed Vaughn, which killed Mo3, um, internet, shaming, body, culture, drugs, you know, whatever. So uh, just whatever way you, whatever generation you're in can try to go towards the light is the best thing you can do as a human being. Exactly. Uh, I want to switch gears because your resume is just incredible. Um, we we talked about your executive producing, but you, you have you've been in the journalism space as well for some years and you reported on the death of Tupac and Biggie in 96 with Source Magazine. I wanted to know, do you think there's a huge difference between gun violence and hip hop today versus back then? Uh, that's a great question again. Uh, one thing I'll say really quickly is that obviously, you know, me covering Tupac and Biggie and, you know, when Tupac died in 96, I wrote that cover, the famous black and white cover I wrote and then obviously when Biggie died again um, I wrote that at the source and you know Who Killed Tupac on a &E, which I produced with Ben Crump and I'm actually starring and who shot Biggie and Tupac with Ice-T and obviously I was there and so 
one thing I'll say that was different there was that those dudes had beef with Tupac. And Tupac got himself in over his head. Obviously, I love Pac. Jim and I, that's my brother, Oakland, as you can see. I got much love for him, but he got himself in a gang situation that wasn't smart. And whoever shot Biggie, whether it be the police or other gang situation, they were targeting him. Whoever shot PNB Rock shot him out of a crime of opportunity. Whoever shot Pop Smoke shot him out of a crime of opportunity. Whoever shot XX and Tanchion shot him out of a crime of opportunity. They didn't actually have beef with him. So what I'm saying is that I think today it's much worse than that. The rapper has a target on his back. And that when we were celebrating LL, Run, you know what I mean? Even Hove or whoever, a, a Buster who's my brother. Um, the rapper was a celebrity. You had love for him. And now you're like, let me go rob that. Let me go shoot that, you know. And so it's a weird thing. And I, I think that that's what's different. That the cloud chasing the internet and the uh, envy and greed of that has caused the rapper to be less loved and to be more targeted. Will there be a season two? I don't know if you could talk about it yet, but will there be a part two for hip hop homicides? Uh, great question. Uh, you know, obviously you can do the math, unfortunately, in terms of how many people have died. And we try to show some really great stories this season. And unfortunately there's hundreds of more stories, whether it be the rapper themselves or a manager or an R&B singer connected to him. And I just want to make sure that the, shows, the show tells interesting stories and not just the obvious ones. But I mean, <laughs> you never know. But definitely, I think it's a pretty good chance, you know. Do you have any upcoming projects that you could share with our listeners or any ways that our supporters could support you? Yeah, I mean, I'm at P. Frank Williams, P-F-R-A-K Williams and all of my platforms. I don't have a little baby, medium size you know, gigantic size. I don't have none of that. Um, but yeah, I got to, you know, you never know. Maybe it's a Freak Nick project coming out next summer. Um, oh, that's going to be good. Or that really dope. Maybe there's a Busta Rhymes finally um, in the 50th of the culture that may come out or Roger Troutman. So um, Zach, more bounce, you know, all of that. So I got a lot of cool things happening and we just blessed. But Hip Hop Homicide is every Thursday, 9 p.m. on Wee TV, And then every Monday on All Black, you know, so... Just want to continue to tell these black stories and celebrate our hip hop heroes and queens and kings, folks like yourself, um, who are telling these stories. So we're, we're very thankful to be able to do it. And we're so happy that you were able to join us on this platform. But before we go, we have to plug in our Black Business Challenge. Everyone knows the Millennia Her podcast. We highlight a black business every Friday. Um, I wanted to know, do you have a favorite black business or have you supported any black business this week? or any black business in particular that you want to shout out? Well, yeah, you know, it's so wild that I'm having a screening party uh, for hip hop uh, homicides and the alcohol sponsor is black. The bartenders are black. The DJ is black. Uh, me and Van are black. <laughs> <laughs> the only thing is the venue is white. So yes, uh, I'm, every day I wake up, I'm trying to support somebody black. I come from East Oakland, California, home of the Black Panther parties. So, you know, I'm still about the collective economics, pajama, you know, if you know what's popping. So, yeah, I'm, you know, I got a, I, I have a black shirt on. It's supported by a business that's owned by multiple races. So, yeah, so it's black every day I wake up. I know that's right. And once again, thank you so much, P. Frank. And make sure you guys tune in to Hip Hop Homicides. Let's discuss it. Um, if you have again, any. We're, I'm solution oriented. I don't want to make 100 episodes of Hip Hop Homicides. Please stop killing each other. Please find some conflict resolution skills. Please get the guns out of your hands. You know, please know that in my business, usually the people that's not black, when they got beat, they solve it in court. Exactly. So we thank you again, P. Frank. Appreciate you for being yeah. on. God bless yeah, yeah. you too. Millennial Podcast. Millennial Podcast.